And this is why. This is why people are like, well, I wanted fucking 40 transactions this year, but I'm not getting my goal. Well, why aren't you hitting your goal? How long are you dialing for? Two hours a day? Well, fucking course you're not hitting your goal. You're not, you're not making enough contacts. But they didn't know they needed to make 20 contacts a day. It's because they didn't break down their goal deep enough to understand exactly what the fuck do you need to do in your day to make sure you hit your goal. So today I wanna help you understand where motivation comes from. I wanna explain to you what low, middle, and high frequency motivations are. And I wanna help you set correct and proper goals so that you can, if you're feeling burnt out, if you're feeling you're not wanting to do some, some shit, you can find it in yourself to be like, you know what, I gotta fucking do it. Because if, if you have, if you understand how to motivate yourself and how, if you understand how motivation works and if you understand how to write clear goals for yourself, um, you will achieve more than what you've ever achieved. Okay? And I want to make sure everyone's achieving as much as they possibly can. You joined this group for a reason. You reached out to me for a reason. Okay? Everyone here, I didn't reach out to you. You guys reached out to me for a reason. You wanted to grow your business. Maybe it's not in cold calling. Maybe it's through some other avenue. And I want to help you with that too. So, like, let me know. But ultimately, you, want, you reached out to me to grow your business. Okay? And that's exactly what I'm here to help you with. Okay? So if anyone's feeling like they're stagnant, if anyone's feeling like they're not getting enough support, you gotta reach out to me, all right? So let's talk about how motivation works, okay? And, and I want you to listen to this if you're having trouble motivating yourself. If you have found, and we've all been there, if you have found yourself like achieving a level of success, Chad talks about this all the time. If you have found a level of success, you start getting comfortable and you dial back all that effort and work that you've been putting in to put yourself into this better position. Like let's say you put 50K in your account. Like, oh wow, that's awesome. I've, or I finally got a listing. Time to cool down and not work as much. Okay, we all go through this. We all go through this. And then what happens? Uh, you're you're not accountable, you're, you're not holding yourself accountable as much, you're not as disciplined, you're slacking off here and there, and that results in um, a month or two going by, no listings, all, you've got, all, you're, all you're doing is just putting out expenses on your, on your bank account, and you're on, you start running low on cash. And then you start feeling that burn, and you're like, oh fuck, now I'm getting financially uncomfortable again, now it's time to put in that work. And then you start putting in that work, you achieve that level of financial security and you're like, okay, time to, time to rest again. And you get caught up in this same loop of not getting anywhere, okay? There's a reason for this. And here's why. We operate off of two motivating factors. Just as humans, as animals, as humans, we operate off of two motivating factors. It's pain and pleasure. We're, at, we're either running away from pain or we're going towards pleasure. And most of us here are operating from moving away from pain, okay? That's like the default. That's the human default. Basically what that is is I have not enough money in my bank account, time for me to start working. That's your motivation, okay? That's a, it's a, it, it's a good, it's a great motivation. It's what kept us alive all this time. It's, it's what allowed us to evolve into what we are today, but it's not enough. It's going to keep you at a low level and you're not going to get to your fullest potential. Because I'm sure, I'm sure everyone wants to get to their full potential, right? Everyone wants to get to their full potential? Okay. Yes. All right. So then we got to stop operating like that. We have to start operating from pleasure. It's the vision in your future. And what is that vision? Okay. No longer do you have to, are you going to be motivated by, uh, oh fuck, I'm running out of money, or oh shit, it's the deadline, or whatever that is. It's not just in business, it's in life and your relationships. Oh fuck, she's about to break up with me. Oh fuck, this, part, this partnership's about to get ruined. It's no, that's not a place you should be operating if you want to reach a potential. To reach a potential, you should be operating from a, well, let's go over it now. There are three frequencies of motivations. 
Okay, there's low, medium, and high. A low level of motivation is, and they're all, they're all great, they're, they're good. It's a good motivation to have. It's going to push you a certain extent, but not as far as you can. A low level of motivation is, I'm gonna show him. Oh, that guy was talking shit. I'm gonna show him. Okay, it's that grudge. It's, it's like a grudge that motivates you. It's that chip on your shoulder. It's like, fuck that guy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show him. Oh, he said he can't, I, I couldn't? That's a low level of, mo that's a low frequency motivation to operate on. It is a motivation and it works. So if you wanna use it, use it. But understand that there are more to it, okay? The, the next level, the middle level, the middle frequency motivation is, I'm gonna do this for my family. I'm gonna do it for my sons. I want to achieve that financial success so that I can give back to my community. Okay? An excellent motivator to use. An excellent It's is a great motivation. It's a great motivator. That's what people call their why. Okay? That's typically the level of motivation that people are thinking on. The highest level of the highest frequency of motivation is I was put on here through fate, destiny, or some higher power deity to make an impact on people, to make an impact in my environment, to make an impact to other people around me, okay? If you look at the greats in any area, like athletics or athletics, or a lot of great business owners, just like billionaires, just absolutely crushing and changing the world. If you take a look at what their motivator is, they have some sort of belief in a higher power. It could be whatever. It's not a certain thing, it could be whatever to you. But if you want the highest level of motivation, I'm not saying believe in a higher power, but I am saying the pattern with these high performing individuals is that they put their faith into a higher power and say, this is the reason I'm put on this earth. The reason that I'm put on this earth is to do this. Like this is, this is my duty and purpose of my being. Okay. That's the highest level of motivation that you can have as far as I know. So understand what level of motivation you're working off of. If it's that low level of motivation, great. That's fine. It works. But step that up a level. And if you do believe in a higher power and you're operating off a of middle, off the middle frequency, step that up. Find a greater purpose for yourself. Okay? So we've we've gone over pain and pleasure and how you should be operating from pleasure. So let's let's get back into that. Now that you understand the three frequencies, now we can go back to operating from pleasure, okay? Your pleasure should be, oh, I do want that car. Oh, I do want to buy that second home for myself. I do want to put my family, I do want to set my family up by next July. I, w I do want to be making 20K a month passive by this, this time. Like that's operating from pleasure. Your why, your, future, your, your motivators, okay? Ass instead of operating from, oh, I'm running out of money. Oh shit, I, my, my family's gonna run out of food. Oh no, they're gonna break up with me, okay? It should, what drives you should be that higher level Thing. Like, for example, um, waking up early is pretty tough for me. But for a while, I was wake I was waking up early to go to the gym, and I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. But my pleasure motivator was, I'm gonna go to Miami. I want to make sure I look good for Miami. Okay. You have, you're, it's tough to always stay motivated. 
So you always have to have that carrot dangling in front of you. You always have to have that carrot dangling in front of you. And it's also really important to be able to visualize it. So I'm going to teach you how to create goals for yourself and how to structure your goals. Okay. Cause I see you guys put, submit your goals. I'll call you out on it here and there, but I, it's time for me to explain it all to you at once on how to create an actually fucking measurable and attainable goal. Okay. Before we get into that though, I do want to brush up on the fact that in order to attain the pleasure, in order to attain that pleasure, whether it be, whether it be, I want to be dating someone that's healthy for me. I want to be, I want to, I deserve, I deserve uh, a loving relationship. I, I deserve success and wealth. What, whatever, er, whatever area of life it is, no matter how hard you go towards that pleasure, if you have limiting beliefs in the way, you will have a hard time achieving that pleasure goal. Okay. In fact, a clear indicator that you have limiting beliefs in the way is if you go through that pain cycle, got some cash, not going to work. Oh shit. I'm running out of money. Got to work. Got some cash. Now it's time for me to not, not work. Oh shit. I'm running out of that. That pain cycle is a clear indicator that you have a limiting belief in the way. Okay. Because if you didn't have those limiting beliefs, you would have shot straight for the pleasure but you're not something's stopping you and it's unconscious and it's programmed inside you. And you need, to, you need to understand what that limiting belief is and get rid of it. Okay. Can anyone identify, can anyone identify with a raise of a hand, like that pain, that pain loop, whether it is, Oh fuck, I keep getting into toxic relationships. Oh shit. I, this, this certain thing happens to my friendships. This certain thing happens to my relationships. This certain thing happens to my finances. This certain thing happens to my, to my business. This cer certain thing happens to my diet. This certain thing happens to my discipline in something. With a raise of a hand, does anyone relate to that? Okay. Colby, you didn't... Colby? I, this, is, this is a full participation thing. It, it, I don't want you to raise your hand if, if not, but like... Guys, the only reason you can't head towards the pleasure is because you believe that something, you, you have a contradictory belief that will allow you to get there. Uh, for example, I'll, I'll just give you my example instead of picking on someone here. Uh, for example, that financial loop, that negative financial loop, that pain loop that I would go, go on. I'd make a bunch of calls, get some listings, not work, and then get poor again. And then that would be the fire under my ass to keep that same cycle going. Okay, at the time I, I didn't know this, I didn't understand this, but once I learned to elicit my limiting beliefs, I realized I didn't feel like I was deserving of success. I didn't think that my clients would have trusted me to, with their asset. I didn't think I could get the job done. I didn't think that people would wanna work with me because I'm new. Um, I didn't think I was deserving of, I don't know if, if I said the success, I was, I was afraid of failure. I was afraid of embar I was, I was afraid of, uh, being embarrassed if I couldn't do it. It was all these fucking dumb shit beliefs that I had stacked on top of each other that didn't allow me to just go like, oh yeah, I'm just going to make calls all the time because of course everyone wants to work with me. And of course I'm deserving of this. And of course I can do it. Right. If you had no contradictory beliefs to attain your goal, you would just do it. Nothing would be stopping you except maybe nothing will be stopping you except your own bullshit. Nothing will be stopping you. So if something's stopping you from achieving your pleasure goals, and if you find yourself continuing in a loop of that pain loop, I don't have a fix for you. I don't have a fix for you. Um, I'll be willing to work with you one-on-one -on -one if you really show me that you can put in some serious work. Okay. I used, I used to get rid of these limiting. I got rid of these limiting beliefs for myself and I used to get rid of these limiting beliefs for others back before I went serious in real estate. So I'm able to get rid of these limiting beliefs for you, but you need to deserve it. Okay. I, I'm not going to waste my time here with that.
but show me you want it and I'll help you. Okay. All right. So how to set goals. It's very important to be able to visualize what you're going after. All right. Um, I, there's a lot of you that's new to the group. And so you haven't heard this from me yet, but it's really important to like, I have a Canva account and it shows me what I'm going after. And it allows me to visualize what I want. Okay. So I'm going to show you. So this is just like a collection, like a, a few, a few slides above. I have my affirmations and the beliefs that I should have in order to become the person I want. It's not just Texas, dude. It's if you want to become a high value, if you want to become like a high level individual, you need to be able to defend yourself. You need to be able to protect yourself and your unit. You need to become a dangerous person yourself. Okay. If you don't know how to protect your family, if you don't know how to protect the people around you, then uh Oh, so every day I look at what I want. These are the investments and assets. This is the lifestyle of what I want. Each picture means something to me. Austin Zavak that I look up to that guy a lot. That guy's fucking dope. And the cool thing is he started just like us from nothing. There's no difference between you, me and that guy and anyone and anyone else. Logan Paul, Jake Paul, fucking going to be billionaires soon. The biggest faces on earth, just two kids from Ohio, nothing special. Okay. You need to be aware of exactly what it is you're looking for, who you want to become and what are the things that you want in life. You need to be constantly reminding yourself of what it is you want. There's, so, there's a concept, there's something called the reticular activation system. Okay. I, I'm going to explain this to you. And this is exactly what, this is what karma is. Okay. If you want to understand karma, this is what it is on a, on a, on a logical scientific standpoint. The reticular activation system is a function of your brain. And it's basically the thing that if you get a new car, let's say a Volkswagen Jetta on your reticular activation system, your RAS, the, the Volkswagen Jetta is on the forefront of your mind. And that's why when you go drive, all you see are all the Volkswagen Jettas. Okay. There's, we're taking in so much fucking information all at once in through all our five senses. You can only take in a small portion of those things. And those small portion of those things are directly reflect what's going on in your head, what your beliefs are, how you see the world. Okay. So one person can see an opportunity, uh, one person, one, one per, something happens and one person can see it as a great opportunity and one person can see it, it as just absolutely nothing and it just passes by their head. Okay. It's because one person had in their RAS seeking opportunity, one person had in their RAS, not that. See you later, Joe. see you later, David. But when I'm at work, I actually have this in front of me which is like my vision board of all the stuff that I want in life, kind of like for this year, like good goals or new car, whatever. Yes. So I just like, have it right in front of me as I'm calling. Good, good. I'm glad. The, the reason why I'm explaining to you the reticular activation system is because you need to be conscious, consciously and unconsciously, you need to be aware of what you're trying to attract into your head. Like, let me explain how karma works. Okay. If you believe in karma, David does need to become a listing agent. He needs to stop fucking focusing on buyers. Um, <laughs> this is how karma works. Oh shit. I did something that I think in my head is bad to me. Now something bad's going to happen to me. 
and then throughout the whole day, all you're thinking about on your RAS is something bad's gonna happen to me, something bad's gonna happen to me, something bad's gonna happen to me. So when you stub your toe, any minor inconvenience happens, or something just happens to you in life because it's life, you're like, oh, it's because I did that thing, oh, and then you get pissed, and then you're like, I shouldn't have done that thing. That's karma. Karma is just you putting, you setting yourself up by putting something in your RAS, something bad's gonna happen to me. And then it self-fulfills itself because that's all you were paying attention to, okay? I don't believe in karma. All I focus on is how can I get everything that I wanna be done today? How can I take advantage of all the new opportunities today? How can I just absolutely crush today? Someone that bumps their toe, someone that gets hit, their car hit, someone that whatever gets their apartment flooded, they might think, mm, I deserve this, this is fucking shit. Whereas someone that doesn't put that garbage in their RAS is like, oh, well, okay, well, let me just focus on um, fixing it and let me get back to going towards what I'm trying to get towards. Okay, don't put garbage in your RAS. Don't put fucking garbage in your RAS. Be very aware and conscious about what kind of words you're using, what kind of language you're using. But that's your RAS. And why I'm, why I'm talking about the RAS is you need to keep what you're going after in your RAS, okay? Like, what's a, what's a real estate example here? Okay, well, let me, let me just tell you a story. In my RAS, for a week, I was like, I'm just so fucking thankful for the new um, real estate listing opportunity that I'm gonna find. That's just gonna fall into my lap. I'm so right, I'm so thankful for the new real estate opportunity that I'm gonna find, that listing opportunity. I'm so thankful for this new listing opportunity that I'm gonna find. I just kept repeating it to myself. And every single day, every single day, because that was on my RAS, I would unintentionally like start a conversation with someone or just like have this energy to myself that attracted someone to have a conversation with me and then somehow it got into what I do for a living and then somehow it got into, oh, I need to sell my home or, oh, I'm looking to buy my home. I'm like, okay, cool, let's stay in touch. I get in my car, I'm like, that's the fucking opportunity. That's, that's the fucking RAS working. That's, that's, that's the law of attraction. That is That karma, law of attraction, that's RAS, okay? You put something in your reticular activation system, all that's all you think about, that's the energy you provide to the world and you create opportunities for yourself based on what you do or what happens to you, okay? If you wanna understand karma and law of attraction from a log logical standpoint, that's, that's what it is. Your RAS is very, very powerful, okay? Someone like some fucking loser um, is probably, on their RAS, it's very different than what your guys' RASs are gonna be, okay? That's what keeps them losers. That's what makes you winners. So be very aware of what's on your RAS. What are you, what, what, are, if, you're, if you're around negativity, if you're, if you're in an environment that's not conducive or productive for you, your RAS is just filled with that shit. Get out of there. Get the fuck out of there. You gotta be able to control your environment. Your environment's very important to you. You, have to, you should be in a high energy environment. Somewhere that gives you a lot of inspiration, some, or put you in a better everything. Control your environment. That was just a little tangent. So let me, let me show you how to write goals. First of all, I want everyone to write this down and this is your task for today, okay? By Monday, you should have all this finished. And I want you to do this because this is what's going to take you the furthest in this year, okay? I want you to, in different areas of your life, in your business, in your personal, in your relationships, um, in your lifestyle, in the assets that you own, just different areas in your life, I want you to make quantifiable, measurable, and realistic goals for yourself, okay? Don't be like, I'm gonna take 700 listings. Awesome, I, I, I wish you did, but realistically, that's, if, if you're still struggling to do scripts and you're not participating in the Breakfast Club and you're, and you're not 
making do- you're not making more than an hour of, of phone calls a day and you're not going to change shit, you're probably not going to do 700 listings. Okay, so be realistic. Don't downplay yourself because what you're cap- what you're capable of accomplishing is a lot more than you think. But don't be like, I'm going to take a thousand listings this year. I'm going to make a million dollars this year. You could, but what are your habits and and and, and behaviors display? Because that's a telling sign of whether you're going to hit a million dollars this year, and it's fucking April. Okay, you got six, you got seven months to make a mil, and you're not working. Okay, don't be don't be a fucking idiot about it. Basically, like be realistic, and then like add a little bit to it. Okay, so make sure your goals are quantifiable, measurable, and reasonable. Okay, uh, who has a goal that they want to share? Give me an example. I want to buy an apartment complex. Buy an apartment complex. Great. Where? How much is the budget? And when do you want it to be by? The budget is going to be at least uh, owner financing, so maybe about 20, 30K down. Oh, wow. $500,000 or less. Fix it up. Refinance cash. Great, 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 great. Thank you. And by when? By my birthday. Okay, good. So each goal, thank you, Diego. That's an awesome goal. By For each goal, you should have a deadline. It should have a deadline. If it doesn't have a deadline, it's just a dream. Who knows when you're going to get it? You need to put some pressure on yourself. There needs to be a deadline by when you get that thing accomplished, okay? Does everyone understand? Let me get, let me get another goal example. Who wants, to, who wants to share one of their goals? Mm-hmm. I want to have my car paid off by the end of December. I Good. just bought it two months ago, and there's like 30 grand I owe. I want to have that paid off by December. Good. Good. has a deadline. It's an amount, and it's reasonable. Good. What else? I want to be like Sagat when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got to have an age deadline, and you got to you got to display out the characteristics that Sagat is. What are these measurable characteristics? Uh, what? Well, give me another example. Besides Dustin and Diego, that, those two understand the goals. I want to flip a house. Okay, how much do you need to flip the house, and by when, Scott? Uh, probably around like fifty to hundred thousand, and I want to do it by end of the year. By the end of the year. Okay, good. So I hope everyone's understanding this pattern. Their goal of I want to get a motorcycle. What kind of motorcycle? How much is it, and by when? Okay. It's none of this fucking ethereal, I want this. What is it? How much does it cost? When do you want it? From there, you can start backtracking. Let's say, let's say I want to make, I want to make 500 grand this year. Okay, what does that mean? 500 grand, your average price, your average commission check is 1,200, 12,000. That's 42 transactions. Okay, now you have until April to December, you have to break that down. 42 transactions. What is that divided by seven? Let's let's just say let's let's do a whole year. Let's do a whole year. Forty-two divided by twelve. You want to do, you want to do, you want to do five hundred thousand dollars this year. Or next year, let's just say. Let's just use a blank year. That's three. That's four transactions a month. Okay. It's not enough to just be like, I want four transactions a month. This is not enough. And I want you to understand this. Listen to what I'm saying here. You also need to continue breaking it down. You also need to continue breaking it down. If you don't know, no, if you don't know your numbers, you're not going to hit your goal. Okay, I say that with urgency. If you don't know your numbers, you're not going to hit your goal. Four transactions a month. That's my goal. That's not good enough. How many, ex, how many listing appointments do you need to go to to hit your goal? Okay, so if you need if you need to go on four listing appointments before you hit a listing, then so that's four listings a month. Let's say you need to go on four listing appointments to get one, tra- one, one listing. So that's four transactions a month, I meant, times four. So, you, so in, a month, in a month, you need 16 listing appointments. But how many c- contacts do you need to hit to get 16 listing appointments? Let's say it takes 20 contacts to get a listing appointment. That's 320 contacts a month. And this is why, this is why people are like, 
well, I wanted fucking 40 transactions this year, but I'm not getting my goal. Well, why aren't you hitting your goal? How long are you dialing for? Two hours a day. Well, fucking course you're not hitting your goal. You're not, you're not making enough contacts. But they didn't know they needed to make 20 contacts a day. It's because they didn't break down their goal deep enough to understand exactly what the fuck do you need to do in your day to make sure you hit your goal. So if you have a goal of, I wanna buy this, or I wanna pay off this, you need to understand what do you need to do each day to get to that goal? Just reverse engineer. You, you, you just have a goal and you just reverse engineer to reach it. I, I have like a template thing that I got from one of the real estate coaches that has like the formula to break down, you know, how many contacts, for this many looking appointments, and all of that. So if someone needs it, just let me know. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Can you say anything? Yeah, uh, do that later, Hannah. Um, focus here. The next thing you have to do, okay, I'm going to explain to you a concept that Michelle introduced to me. Um, it's, it's from a book called The 12 Week Year or something like that. Basically, it tells you how to accomplish as much as you can in four weeks and treat it like a year. So this is how it works. Okay. People set year goals for themselves. That's, that's very, that's, that's like the most common type of goal setting, I guess. And what happens is they'll just kind of fuck around for the first six months and then they'll realize, oh shit, it's July. Got to step it up. And then they maybe do a little more. And then October, November hit rolls around. They're like, oh shit, now it's time to really like put a fire under ass. It's crunch time. Let's go. And then they start doing the shit which they should have been doing the entire year. And then chances are, you're not gonna hit your goal. We don't want that. We don't want eight months of nothing, 10 months of grinding, and then not hitting your goal. That sucks, that's not, a, that's not how you should be living, okay? If you wanna be a high achiever, if you want to achieve a lot in your life, which I know a lot of you do, if not everyone, okay? If you wanna set yourself up for financial success ASAP, and get out of the fucking grind and hustle, and you wanna provide for you and your family, if you wanna create that wealthy lifestyle for yourself, if you wanna live a life of luxury, if you wanna live a good ass life where you just be like, yeah, I want that, let, let me buy it. You can't live like that. You have to segment your year into four quarters, okay? You should have quarterly goals for yourself quarterly goals. That way, you're not doing most of the year of bullshit and then and then uh and then just trying to do the most two months at the end. It's what's my quarterly goal? What am I what am I trying to financially achieve? What am I trying to achieve in my business? What am I what are the assets that I'm trying to get? What am I trying to do here? What are my goals? What are my personal goals? What are my relationship goals in this quarter? And the only, like the most you'll lose is just like one month of bullshit if you're just not on your game. Because in the middle, middle month, you're like, oh fuck, time to, time to step it up. And that last month, you're like, okay, I gotta go. And then you have that three more times. And by the end of that year, you have accomplished way more in that year because you set four quarterly goals than just one year long goal, okay? The quarterly goals are also, very much more easily seeable. It's more easy to visualize. It's more easy to digest and understand. So make sure you're setting quarterly goals for yourself. Okay? Here is this quarter's goal for myself. I have it, I have visually the things that inspire me and drive me, the things, the things that I want to go for. I have my date range, okay? The fucking date range, we're in Q2 right now, okay? So you're gonna be starting your Q2 goals uh, like a third of the way through Q2, okay? I want everyone to create a Canva account. I want everyone on their Canva to start writing down, visualizing and writing down their goals. And I want you to look at this every fucking day. I want this to be a tab on your Safari, on your Google Chrome. Don't use Safari. 
this should all be broken down to cost and time limit and what you need to do each week, okay? You should have these written down. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show it to you. I have, a, I have four of these for this year. And then I have the year page. So I, ha I have quarter one, Q2, Q3, Q4, and then I have the year goal. And the year should be a, a, a total, an, an added up version of the four Qs, the few, four quarters. And then you should have one for the next year and the one for the next year. You need to know what direction you're going. A year out is great. It's not far enough. Where do you, like, Benny, Albert, Jesus, where do you want to be in five years? And then start scaling that back. It's just like the thing of, I want four, I want 42, tra I want half a million, but I only did three transactions this year. Yeah, it's because you didn't understand what it took on a daily basis to get there, okay? And if you're like, I wanted to, I, you're fucking, let's say Colby is goddamn 28 years old. And he's like, I wanted to be retired, but I wanted to be retired by now, but I didn't. Well, it's because you didn't understand what it took to get there and then work your way back, understanding what needs to happen each year to get there. And not only that, what happens each quarter to get to that year goal, to be able to get what happens in all fucking 50 quarters that happens in five years to get you that far? You need to be able to break this shit down quarterly every year. If you're not, you're just blindly going through a maze. Okay? Is everyone clear on what to do with their Canva and their goals? Yes. Okay. This is very, very important if you want to get to where you're going, okay? So by Monday, when we're all submitting our shit, I want, I want each and every one of, and I'm gonna check on you, I want everyone to have this shit done. Everyone needs to know where they're going. Nobody in the Yoon group is blindly going through a maze, okay? Everyone's achieving what they want to achieve. And if you're not, you're utilizing your resources wrong. You have everything you need here. You literally have everything you need here to become a top producing agent. Okay? At that point, it's your own lack of discipline, willpower, or limiting beliefs. That's on you. I want, I want everyone to understand. Like, this is... The co-founders and what we have, what Chad and Michelle are able to provide to hear us, I, I have spoken to about 150 agents now um, recruiting. I've had, over two, I have, I've had over 250 conversations with agents. We are the greatest group. Like seriously, like we have insane fucking accountability and coaching. We literally call your leads for you. We'll set listing appointments for you will call the seller for you. Who the fuck does that? Nobody, no fucking buddy. If you've never been a part of a different brokerage, you don't understand what it's like to be alone by yourself in a different brokerage. I've been a part of four different brokerages. A lot of you have been in other brokerages. You've all been alone, left alone, deep end of the pool. You haven't, you don't, you don't have shit there. That's why 90% of agents fail out of the business. We have the greatest group in the goddamn world here. And I believe that 100% because that's a fact. We have the best fucking group. So utilize, utilize your resources. Reach out to me, reach out to Chad, reach out to Jason, reach out to Michelle, reach out to anyone else on our upline if you need help with anything, okay? Because again, if you don't accomplish your goals, that's, a, that's, your, willpower, that's your lack of willpower, discipline, and, and your limiting beliefs. Thank you, sir. Everyone here is capable of achieving what they want. And I, I want to make sure everyone achieves what they want, okay? Uh, who needs to become better at converting? Who could be using, who could be setting a lot more listing appointments? Soggy, <laughs> there you are. Keep your, <laughs> what, keep your camera on, dude. I think he runs away. 
Okay, so it sounds like everyone could use help converting, right? You all want to become better at your job. You all want to, and even if you're not working with listings, the people with the cameras off, if you're, even if you're just in day-to-day -day conversation with people, you still need to be able to get over objections, just common objections that people are going to be asking you. It's not just a listing thing. It's not just a cold calling thing. It's not just that. Being able to handle, communi handle communication and conversation as a real estate agent requires being able to answer everything confidently. And the, the things that we can't answer confidently is exactly what we go over on in the breakfast club, okay? So everybody here, if you want more production, even if you're working with buyers, like buyers are gonna throw shit tests at you and ask you, ask you things that knock you off your game. What's your commission? Like I've got a friend in the, I've, I've got a friend. Like why should I work with you? You have to be able to know how to combat those objections. Okay, so number one, and and this is this is one of the things that changed my fucking life. I put 60k guys, I put 60 grand of commissions in one month this last month. In the last 30 days, I put 60k of commissions either in active, pending or closed. Okay? That didn't start happening for me until I was able to knock down every conversation that not every. Not every. But that didn't start happening to me until I started to be able to confidently close most conversations that I've had with people, okay? And that involves participating on the breakfast club, okay? Participate on the breakfast club. I should be here, everyone's name being screamed out in the breakfast club. Number two, tracking sheets. Chad's gonna call your numbers for you. I'm gonna call your numbers for you. And for Chad, first of all, for Chad to call your numbers for you, that's like a 90%, 95%, that's a 90% like landing rate. Like Chad converts, like a motherfucker. It's insane. If you want Chad to convert your leads, you have to do your tracking sheets. You have to write down how many contacts you're getting, how many hours you're dialing or working, and who your contacts are. Because we can see, okay, you're, you're, if we're, if we're seeing that you're, you're talking to way too many people, if you're, if we're, if we're seeing that you're making way too many dials and not talking to enough people, we need to make some changes there, right? That's a clear indicator something's wrong. But if you're talking to a bunch of people and not setting any listing appointments, then we got to work on your objection handling, your closing, and your overall script. Okay. Now that we see that we're, it, it, once you start setting listing appointments and you're not getting listing agreements signed, then we need to see, okay, what's your listing presentation? How are you closing them? How are you leading them? And how are you framing things? Like we can track everything and see where, what's going wrong if you're tracking your numbers. So you've been sending your tracking sheets to Chad. I want you to CC me in them. I wanna see how you guys are doing. I wanna see how you guys are converting. And I want to be in, in tune with what's going on in your business and your tracking and your conversion. Okay? Every day. Not fucking wait till Friday I'm going to send out five things that I hastily typed out or, or written out. None of that. Every day. Okay? We'll call your leads for you. We will fucking call your leads for you. Okay? So Dustin, set, Dustin got like three listing agreements signed. He got like six listing, listing appointments. And let's just say Dustin has six contacts for us to call. Like we're Dustin, Dustin's six listing appointments now turns into like four, uh, like ten or eleven for the week. So make sure, make sure you're, and don't forget the reason why you're doing this is because you're trying. You you want to convert better. You want more money. You want to change your life and attain the goals and freedom that you desire. It starts with improving your skill and doing the work, okay?